Hey there everybody, Forrest here, and welcome back to Reacteria! A series where I react to and debunk ridiculous claims, all while slowly being driven insane by them. You guys have actually been sending me several videos to react to, some of them in the comment section and some of them were sent directly to my email through my website, and I picked two of them that I thought would be fun. The first one is Incredible Artifacts That Scientists Are Hiding, EVOLUTION! and it's published by Word of God. And when you look through the comment section down here, it is full of absolutely rave reviews. Thank you for opening my eyes to the truth of humanity. We have been fed heresy for so long. You have opened my eyes to many things. Thank you, something in Russian, something in Russian. Thank you, so incredible facts. I so cruelty in this evolutional view. So I'm very interested to see what they have to say. But before I do, I wanna take a second to thank my patrons on Patreon. Look at this. Look at this list of names. Every single one of these names comes from an actual human being who, of their own free will and accord, has volunteered to financially support my goals and aspirations. I can't comprehend that level of generosity, but I can tell you that I am beyond grateful for it. Every single one of you is making all of this possible. So sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, Thank you so much for being a part of my dream to teach the people of this world to love science and themselves. It, it means more to me than I can express. And if you want to become a patron as well, you can do so by using the link in the description of this video. The lowest tier is just three bucks and that gets you access to the patron discord and it gets your name on the supporter wall, both on my website and in many of the videos that I make. And with that, let's see what the word of God has to say. One of the worst cases of scientific falsification and delusion was Haeckel's evolutionary drawings of embryos. He fraudulently faked the similarities between human and animal embryos. After being exposed, this liar confessed to falsifying his embryo drawings. His caricatures were refuted by the scientific community. Okay, so yeah, Haeckel's diagrams have been discarded. They're not used anymore. But that's not because he was some huckster who just came up with some ridiculous ideas about animal embryos and drew some crazy outlandish images and just tried to get them published and fooled everybody. It's because he drew those things in the late 1800s. Those are remarkably accurate, hand-drawn illustrations made shortly after the Civil War ended. So like, for their time, they were pretty cool. But now, we have really nice scanning electron microscope images that are way more accurate because they're basically photographs. So nothing's exaggerated, there's no opinion put in there, nobody's trying to like really indicate one thing, so maybe it's a little bit stretch or whatever. This, this is indicative of scientific literature at the time. Like, for hundreds of years, science relied on hand-drawn illustrations like this. And sometimes that was really bad. And sometimes it worked out just fine. But today, we have really good objective images, many of which prove the points that people like Haeckel were trying to make. Because Haeckel wasn't the only person to draw illustrations like this. There were, there were a lot of them. So to the point of the person in the video here, let's take a look at some actual modern images of real embryos, all at the same stage of development, and you tell me which one you think is the human. Pause the video here if you want to take a second to guess, because I'm going to give you the answer in three, two, one. Did you pick this one? You'd be wrong, that's a chicken. The actual human is over here. And if you're like me and you're not gonna be able to sleep tonight until you know the rest of the answers, hear those as well. Human embryos do not have gill slits. I am not gonna make fun of the way they say gills. I thought about it, just poking fun at them, just a little bit, just lighthearted, you know, kind of just teasing. But I'm gonna let this one slide because on the first episode of Reacteria, I misspelled the words purport and evolution. It is my whole job to know at least one of those words. So we're gonna let Jill's slide today. They have pharyngeal sacs. It is unscientific to call them Jill's. Okay, yeah, no, I see what they're trying to get at here. They're not super wrong, but they're not right either. What they're doing is they're taking two things that are very closely related and they're conflating them and then they're missing 
the whole context and list of definitions that goes along with those two things. So what you need to know is that when an embryo is developing, it has these little pouches that go down here. They're called pharyngeal pouches. And those will later become things like the ears and the jaw and a whole bunch of other structures around here. The clefts in between those pouches are what we call pharyngeal clefts or gill slits. Gill slits is sort of just like a colloquial term for this. And the reason for that is that those are what become gills in fish. And the reason we have them is because we evolved from fish. So they're leftovers. So the pharyngeal pouches that we have evolved from the pharyngeal pouches that fish have. They serve different functions now, but it's like the same stage of development. So it would be inaccurate to call this like the fish stage of embryonic development that doesn't really track but it does make sense to say that in the vast majority of the animals that have ever had pharyngeal pouches they they were very much related to gills so like it just i get what they're trying to say but they're missing a lot of context here and and they're just not really hitting the mark I should also point out that humans are chordates. And if you ask most people what that means, a lot of the time they're gonna tell you that it just means we have a spinal cord. This is the key to membership in the club that is the phylum chordata. As long as you have a spinal cord, you're a chordate. And that's not true. In fact, there are actually two different qualifications to be in the phylum chordata. And those two qualifications have a very special caveat. Here's how it works. To be a chordate, you need number one, a notochord, any kind of a nerve cord that goes down your back at any point in your development. There are actually some chordates that lose their notochord later on in their life, and they're still chordates. And number two, to be a chordate, you need to have gill slits at any point in your development. And there are a lot of chordates, including us, that lose their gill slits later on in their development. For us, it's actually pretty early on, but whatever. So... If you really want to sit here and split hairs and nitpick and say, oh, we can't call these gill slits, okay, you now need to make a totally new phylum, totally new taxonomy, totally new evolutionary tree, really just totally new phylogenetic tree. It, it just totally goes against the principle of parsimony. You have to make totally new groups with totally new rules just to accommodate this weirdly parochial worldview that you're keeping here. So like, sorry. It's literally part of the definition of what we are, is that we had gill slits at one time. This scam with gill slits stimulates abortion. After all, if a human embryo is not yet a person, then it is not a pity to kill him. Whoa! <laughs> That's quite a leap! <laughs> oh, I thought I knew where they were going with this. I did not. I was very wrong. Um, so many first of alls. Humans are animals. We're not plants, we're not fungi, we're not bacteria, we are animals, specifically we are great apes. That doesn't mean there's no shame in killing a human. Just because something's an animal doesn't mean that it's cool to kill it? What is that logic? Also, like, I'm not going to get into my stance on the whole abortion debate because this is neither the time nor the place, but like, as a biologist, I can make a good, intelligent argument for life beginning at conception, for life beginning at the heartbeat, for life beginning at implantation, for life never really beginning at all because the sperm and the eggs are both alive and the zygote they produce is alive. So it's just a continuous stream. It never really has a start point. Or that you're never really truly alive until you're born or at least like viable outside of the womb on your own. I can make so many arguments about these things. I can point out the fact that women miscarry all the time without even noticing. You have a fertilized egg, doesn't really work out, your body flushes it out, you never even tell the difference. Is that a miscarriage really or is it not? Like, I, there's so many, so many things here that you did not take into account with that, but none of it matters because the whole abortion debate isn't about life or when life starts or what life is or what humanity is. None of that applies. The abortion debate is about one thing, and that is about rights, bodily autonomy. It's about what a person can do with their own body and what consequences those choices may or may not have on another body. That's the whole thing. This argument is insane. <laughs> no matter what side you're on, this is the argument of a crazy person, and it does nobody any good. 
Holy crap! Another one of the greatest archaeological fakes is the Pill Down Man, also known as Eoanthropos dosoni. The, the Pill Down Man has been considered in 500 doctoral theses. Scientists receive titles and credibility because of these bones. Yeah, but that's just how science works. Those people wrote about the best information that they had until that information was discredited. And then we all moved on. For a long time, doctors thought that different medical conditions were caused by an imbalance of humors. And the humors were all the different fluids in your body, your blood, your urine, your sweat, so on and so forth. And so like, if you were sick, they would just be like, oh, you have too much blood. Your humors are out of balance. And they would you know, bleed you. And a lot of people died from literally being bled to death by their doctor. Does this mean that medicine is a scam and nobody should go to the doctor anymore because some doctors got it wrong and like people actually got MDs learning about this insane science of humors? No, it means that was what we thought was true. We later found out it isn't true. People probably got advanced degrees proving that it wasn't true. And now here we are in a better world where nobody's having to worry about their humors anymore. Like that's just, this is a silly argument. I'm sorry. You can't say, yeah, doctors were wrong back then and then say the whole field is wrong now. That doesn't make any sense. The evolutionist Samuel Werner considered pygmies to be monkeys who had not yet passed the stage of evolutionary development. He took a 23-year-old African pygmy, Otabanga, barbarously separated from his wife and children and brought him in a cage like an animal to America for a world exhibition. Placed in the monkey house, the human Otabanga became a living exhibit of the missing link in evolution. Wow. What a gross argument. Um, what happened to Otabenga and others like him, because there were whole human zoos at one point, was atrocious and disgusting. It is beyond excuse. It is beyond justification. It should be excoriated and called out for the evil, hideous, monstrous nonsense that it was. It has nothing to do with evolution. Just because some people misinterpreted science and did something crappy, that doesn't change science. If Ted Bundy said two plus two is four, we don't get to throw out mathematics now. Here's a fun fact for you. The whole reason we have a space program is because of Nazi rocket engineers, Nazi rocket scientists brought over here during Project Paperclip is the whole reason we got to the moon. So what, do we bring down the ISS now? because of what the Nazis did then, you're using the suffering of real human beings to try to debunk evolution, which makes no sense, and to try to prop up your creationism. What a lazy, weak, and gross argument to make. Ew. Lucy is another speculative reconstruction of the link between apes and humans. Oh boy, it's Lucy again. I wonder what they're gonna say. Biometric data showed that Australopithecus was not a humanoid creature. No, it didn't. Lucy's body parameters match the monkeys. No, they don't. Australopithecus translates as Southern Ape. Subscribe to the <laughs> Really? That's, that's your big zinger at the end there? That's what you're going to end on, is that Australopithecus means Southern Ape. You're right. Australo means Southern. Pithecus means ape. You got me. Call up, I think it was Raymond Dart who named that species. Tell him that he blew it for everybody because Australopithecus means southern ape and that means it can't possibly be our ancestor. Uh, fun fact, names don't define things. If I call my couch a cat, it's still a couch and not a cat. I can't believe I'm having to explain this. Also, you do know that names can change, right? Like that's happened before. My research is in Homo erectus. That name means upright walking human. The original name for Homo erectus was Pithecanthropus erectus. Pithecus again, meaning ape, anthro, referring to humankind. So Pithecanthropus erectus means upright walking ape man. Did it stop being an ape man and start being a human 
when we changed the name? Or was it always what it was? Would you believe in evolution all of a sudden if we changed the name of Australopithecus to something else? To Homo? Whatever? Just, wow. What a bizarre note to end on. Overall, I'm going to give this one a science teacher challenge level 1 out of 10. It's really just bad arguments, very few of which even touch on evolution as a whole, and those arguments are oftentimes made in bad faith and have really, really gross connotations to them. So just awful, awful video. I don't know what the people in the comment section were smoking. Thanks, God, says arm wrestling world. <laughs> but we're not quite done yet because there's one more video that I wanted to tackle this episode, and this one is going to be a rapid fire challenge. You remember John and Jane from a couple episodes ago, the whole debunking human evolution thing? That was a part of a big series, and that big series is on a DVD, and this is the promo for that DVD. So we're going to go through it just as fast as we can and see how many problems we can spot. Let's go! I know that the last two weeks that we've been talking about evolution has been really tough for some of you. Now, I don't mind if you have faith in your God, but science doesn't require faith. It requires evidence. Well, it seems to me that that's just what's missing from the whole idea of evolution. What's missing? Good acting. Life cannot come from non-life. But then in the next chapter, it talks about how all life sprung from non-living material. Abiogenesis is supported by a lot of evidence. And then it talks about mutation and natural selection and how it can change one animal into another, but mutation only loses information. And That's not true. So how does a simple living organism turn into something like us? Evolution. That's called evolution. I mean, you have to think about like the complexity of the human eye and how we could never design something like that. Pretty much any idiot could design a better eye than what we've got going on. In fact, a lot of animals have better eyes than humans do. Cephalopods don't even have the blind spots that we have. Or how, or how the human body can heal itself. Healing is primarily the result of cell division. We know how that works too. I just don't understand how some half-pound insect-eating shrew that somehow dodged whatever killed the dinosaurs could evolve from ape to ape-man over millions of unseen years and then poof! You have humans! Well, that's because your teacher sucks. If evolution were true, we'd have millions of in-between creatures running around everywhere, right? No, we see them in the fossil record. Why would they be running around? And all of the in-between fossils could fit in the back of my Prius. No, they couldn't. Well, maybe they could. How big's your Prius? And you know what else? I just don't understand how all of this started. Well, that's obvious. You should get a better teacher. I mean, you say that science doesn't rely on faith, but evolution requires faith. Faith that everything just burst out of nothing. It sounds like you're talking about the Big Bang. The Big Bang has nothing to do with evolution. That gas clouds collapsed and turned into stars, and all this stuff just collided around the sun to create planets, including Earth. Okay, well now you're talking about astronomy and astrophysics. We have evidence for that stuff too. That is just the right distance away from the sun to sustain life. Oh no, 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 no. The habitable zone is like almost 100 million miles wide. The Earth could move around quite a bit and still be just fine. And also, if it wasn't in the habitable zone, you wouldn't know because we wouldn't be here. So like, you did evolve on this planet because this planet was right for us to evolve on, not the other way around. The planet isn't right for us, we're right for it. You're putting the cart before the horse, don't do that. It requires faith to believe that living organisms created male and female. Not all animals are dioecious, so they don't all have two sexes. Also, why'd you throw the word created in there like that? I just think it takes a lot more faith to believe in evolution than it does to believe that all the design, marvelous design around us points to a designer. What marvelous design? Do you mean the marvelous design of having the breathing tube and the eating tube right next to each other? Because I'm pretty sure like any intelligent person wouldn't make that mistake. And now I'm just rambling. So does anyone else have a question? Be prepared to give an answer with the new DVD, Debunking Evolution, What Every Christian Student Should Know. Oh man, that's bad. And with that, I'm Forrest Valkai. Thank you so much for watching, for liking, for commenting, for subscribing, and all the other stuff that you do here on YouTube. Please exit through the gift shop on your way out, and while you're down there in the links in the description, check out my podcast and my Patreon. Have an awesome rest of your day, and never stop learning. Bye-bye.